Hey guys, I guess it's time. Let's talk about the Falcon Eddies. Man, these guys are one of my favorite units. One of the most devastating units. One of the scariest units. And one of the most fragile units. A lot of you new guys are probably wondering where to get them. Because you see them out on the battlefield just destroying your whole army. Well, um, let me show you first of all where to get them. So you either hit F5 or go up here into the menu and hit your season option. Uh, go to your unit challenges. And right up here where it says season 6. You can change this by just clicking on it. And here they are. You just you can go to all the seasons right here and start working on the, the quest to get particular units. And also in season seven, these guys are gonna be a lot cheaper than they are right now. So season seven, you can start working on them, probably get them right away. But you just click on this, hit yes, and uh, there they are. All these units are good. The mall's good. The mall's way overpowered right now. And in season seven, you actually get a uh, rune, which um, let you carry 20% further than you can um, right now. So it, it's going to even be more devastating. But here are the, the eddies. Well, now that you know where to get them, let's uh, check out their veterancy line. Well, here we are at the veterancy section. I actually went full bottom line on these guys. I know by looking at the two lines, the top line looks more appealing. But trust me, take the bottom line. If you take the top line, these guys crawl. They are so slow. By the time you get them to where you want them to be, the battle's either over or half of them are dead. This section right here, movement speed by 10%. You get that three times. It makes them three times faster than the top line. And that is crucial. When someone starts to trap your area, you can move them out of the way. When you see shit going down and, and your instincts telling you to move them the hell out of there, you can with a little bit faster speed than the top line. All right, let's actually look at the bottom line sections here. The first one is increase the health by 3%. You get that two times. Um, increase piercing defense, which is huge with these guys because once you put these guys on the battlefield, Archers are going to be looking for them. You're painting a huge target on your back, and all archers on the enemy team are going to be looking for them. Um, the third one, we talked about it, movement speed, 10%, three times. Most important reason why they take the bottom line. Um, increase in slashing defense by 3%. You get that three times. I'll tell you what. Once you put these guys on the battlefield, everybody's going to be after them. There's going to be rogues sneaking up and trying to take out a couple of them before you can kill them. There's gonna be short sword and shield guys riding up on their horse, dismounting on them, trying to take them out. And they're gonna throw their iron sides on and try to slash away and take as many out as they can before you can kill them. So this is important. This keeps them alive. Um, increase in ammo by 5%. It's huge, you get that twice. You get more uh, range defense right here. More health, it's important. Um, increase in ammo again. Talked about that. Same section as that. And here's another reason why to take the bottom line is you get two more soldiers. After you finish off the bottom line, you have six points to put into the top line. First section here is increase maximum range by five meters. You get that two times. Uh, increase blunt damage by 2%. You get that three times. And you get one point into accuracy which isn't too bad. Um, other things in the top line here that make it look more appealing than the bottom line. Um, increase rate of fire by 5%. You get that once. Um, increase blunt damage 2%. You get that three times. Um, increase blunt armor penetration by 5%. You get that three times. Uh, increase accuracy by 4%. You get that twice. Increase blunt damage by 2%. You get that three more times. Increase accuracy by 4%. You get that three times. And reload time. So by choosing the top line, they're more accurate. They do a little more damage. 
and they reload a little faster. But none of that compares to having this movement speed. Try both lines, see which one you like better, but in the end, I know you're going to pick the bottom line. All right, let's check out these guys' attributes. Um, by going bottom line, your health is over 6,000. Uh, strength is 12. Leadership is 335. Um, speed is 4.5, which is still really slow. But if you pick the top line, it's so much slower. And like I said before, by the time you get them to where you want them to be, um, either the battle in that section's over or half of them are dead. Range 130. Uh, ammo is 172. Labor, you don't want to bring these guys with you. <laughs> I'll just tell you that right now. Um, these guys, uh, blunt armor penetration is 4,392. That is insane. And uh, blunt damage is 3,329. Okay, piercing defense on these guys is 617. That's not too shabby. That'll help them live longer. And if they live longer, they're going to do more damage and kill more things. Um, a lot of this has to do with the doctrines we put on there. We'll get to in a minute. Um, slashing defense is 529. Not too bad. Uh, blunt defense is 343. Okay, let's check out the docs I use on these guys. Um, the first two, they come with the unit after you're done doing all the quests. This one is increased accuracy by 25%, which is awesome. And the next one is piercing defense by 100. And that's one of the reasons why their piercing defense is so high. Um, I tried to go mostly defensive things with uh, this unit because they hit like a train anyway. And it's more important to keep them alive, in my opinion. It could be right. It could be wrong. I don't know, but that's just what I do with them. So this one is more piercing defense, 80 more health 300 you could probably use like a blunt penetration here if you have one but i had an extra one of these and i thought it might help out better so i just threw a breakthrough dock on here um and it just does 95 more to units you don't really have to add like the assassination dock on here i think it's the defensive stuff is more important um because you're not really going to kill uh, a hero with one cannonball anyway so, but you will kill tons of units with this stock. The only thing in unit traits really is they're encumbered. Yep, obviously slow. Um, attack area for unit order. Um, you will be using this constantly. You're going to be moving this all over the place, shooting different things and killing a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, set up weapon. Actually, when you move these guys to an area, they'll stand there until you hit uh, set up weapon, they'll uh, get down into firing position. Or if you hit attack, they'll get down into firing position. Or if you use this area attack, they'll also get down into firing position. For the formations, tell you the truth, I don't use this one at all. Um, this one is probably to defend against trebs, I would imagine, um, but I don't bother using it because it scatters the cannonballs too much. With this one, I can put them in a line and actually point them like an arrow into the enemy and it keeps the cannonballs together more and makes them more accurate in my opinion. Okay, we're gonna go into the billeting officer here and choose uh, unit training. And that'll bring us into a section where I can show you a couple things with their setup. Okay, here we are in the training area. Um, I just wanna show you guys a couple things in here. This is the dispersed Position. formation, Disperse. um, and you can hit the um, ready weapons with, whoops, you can hit the ready weapons with these guys ready. like this, and they'll get down. And right as you set them like this, if they see any enemy, they'll start shooting at them. Um, I imagine this formation is for trebs, um, to defend against trebs better than the other one, so they're not all together. But if a treb comes anywhere near any of these guys, it's going to kill them. You know, so that doesn't matter. And I find that when I shoot at the enemy, when they're in this formation, that it's less accurate. And since I picked the bottom line, they're less accurate anyway than the top line. So I like keeping them together like this. Spread out. 
and let's say the enemy's at the doorway, I like to have them in a line like this when I'm shooting. I don't have them like this. Spread out. Just for the fact that I have to keep them as accurate as I can. So I, I whenever I'm shooting at a target, I like to point it at point them at it like an arrow. Like this. So it's just pointing at the doorway. They sit down and their shots will stay together better when I shoot them like this. See? This might be a uh, preference for me, but I just feel like they're more accurate when you shoot them like this. Keeps their cannonballs together and uh, does more damage. Then you can hit the um, the three key again and it stands them back up so they stop firing. So let's say that, you know, you just killed all the enemy over there. That'll make them stop shooting when you stand them up like this. Okay, actually with these guys, um, you want to aim them a little bit before the enemy. Um, I've tried aiming them right on the enemy unit and they just shoot like way over their head. So if you aim them just a little bit before the enemy, you can hit them better. And they're running up. So they, like right there. You just seem to hit them more if you aim like right on the unit. It'll shoot over their heads more more than likely. So that's that's my tip right there is to aim just before the unit a little. You get more more value out of them. Pull down in six seconds, which isn't too bad. Um, another disadvantage to these guys, other than them being slow is when the enemy is right on top of them, they'll stop shooting. They just won't fire. Let's, let's check it out. I'm going to put them here. Get them into the position. See, see they'll start shooting at them right away. But when the enemy is on top of them like this, they will not fire. It never used to be like that. They changed it some sometime along the way, but that's one of the major disadvantages. Like when a uh, hero comes up to them like this, uh, they will not fire. If a hero gets like in close to them and gets around them like this, they will not fire. So they're just at the mercy of the of the hero trying to kill them. I think that's basically it in here. So let's uh, take off and I'll show you a couple other things. So now what I want to do is show you guys a few different examples of different castles in uh, different places I'd like to put these guys. So this section will be about that. Okay everybody, this is White Elk Fort. Um, this is probably the most obvious position for these guys when the enemy comes storming through the front door. Um, you just want to shoot down the middle of the aisleway, right into the doorway. Um, if there are archers to the right on the wall, then you might want to move them back a little bit. If they have cannons outside shooting in, uh, you might want to move them to the right or left. If you have control over the right stairway and the enemy are coming down the left stairway, you might want to move them up a little bit. You can see how this will work. Fire into the crowd. Take them out on that side. I mean, you can see they charge cavalry in the back. That happens sometimes. You just got to be ready for it. You got to constantly be looking around. We took them out there. Continue to shoot into the crowd. Here you can see why you put a target on your back every time you bring the eddies into play. They can be pretty nasty when you put them in the right position. If you have control over the right stairs and the right wall is still intact, they haven't destroyed it yet, you can put them into this position. Then you can take them out right at the top of the stairs. See how I aim a little bit in front of the unit? That's just nasty. Always uh, look around, make sure no one's sneaking up behind your guys. There's always that short sword and shield coming around, jumping off his horse and trying to kill as many of them as he can. This is another position you can go. You get a little more brave. Get a better angle on them. 
This really pisses the enemy off. Now let's say that you don't have control over the right side of the stairs, and you want control over the right side of the stairs. You can put them into this position. You might be able to catch their archers off guard like this. They don't even see this coming. Check this out. Now that's how you clear the top of the stairs. They didn't even get a shot off. Usually if they see him down there, they'll start firing and kill half of them. But sometimes you can get lucky. This is my favorite part. This is the little bunker behind home point. This is a good area for them. Very hard to get at them. Archers have a hard time hitting them. Uh, Trebs have a hard time hitting them, as you can see. It's very difficult to get a Treb in there. When they do, it kills like three or four of your guys, but I've only had it happen a couple times. And you can just sit back here and fire into the crowd. This has saved my game so many times. You can uh, actually move them around a little bit in here. Like put them off to the side like this. There's some archers over there we want to take out. Now for attacking, I'd like to go up on the left stairway. Um, I used to go up on the right, but it's hard to see a lot of their troops because of that building in the way. So they have a lot of cover there. So I like to go up on this side and just pummel their archers and javelin throwers. They have crossbowmen over there. Um, you just have a way better angle. But it's better to do it fast and get out because once they notice you up there, they're going to come after you. The second place I like to use these guys while attacking this fort is the right first aid station. I have them overhanging the circle a little bit so they keep infinite ammo. I'll ride over to their base and I'll be able to hit them right in that alleyway that they always hide their troops over there. Place a circle right over there at the edge. This will help keep them out of the circle so we can cap it. So the cannonballs hit right on the edge over there. Usually they just have a pile of troops over there, but they don't this time for some reason. I could probably move them up to this point, but you never know what's gonna happen. They're safe where they're at, so I'll just keep them there. The enemy could put some artillery out or have archers out and destroy them in no time if I put them up this close. They just keep pummeling that circle while our troops move up. All we have to do now is just keep them out of the circle and we'll cap it. A couple stragglers here and there. At Wall Fort, I usually use these guys in one area, and that's at the last supply point. Um, there's a lot of room out there, and the enemy, you can see them coming from a mile away. So I just set my guys in here and start pummeling them as they come. If they run out of ammo, I just move them back over in the circle, which is like 10, 15 feet away. So it doesn't take long at all to get all your ammo back. And I just keep maneuvering them around in here. All the walls surrounding this area really protect you guys against archers. I was playing one time in here and they trapped so much that all the walls were gone. After a few minutes of this, the enemy is probably going to get pissed off come in here after you. Luckily you have a lot of allied troops coming in and out of here, which makes for good protection. I'll just let you guys check out the rest of this section so you can see how I maneuver around in here. And then I'll move on to the next castle.
after a while, they'll just start sending everything into that supply point, trying to take out those gunners. Guys will be running in there by themselves, trying to trying to kill one or two of them. Good old Valley Fortress. Right after we have an epic fail at eight, I like to uh, take a couple cheap shots at the supply tent. I just take a couple and then I move them because I know they trap them right there. Then I'll move them back up to the supply point and get ready to pummel the stairs. Once I put these guys in place here, I'll ride down and start pummeling the stairway. Sometimes the enemy doesn't even come up this stairway once they see all the cannonballs. This is a good thing because then we can bottleneck them on the other stairway. I'll keep this up because my gunners have infinite ammo if they're sitting on the supply point until either the game's over or they take C. Looks like the enemy's trying to take over C, and then the other half are trying to get up to get to my gunners. I'll keep fighting here as long as I think we still have a chance. But once I see that we're getting overrun, I'll get my gunners inside. Once in a while, random heroes will come up here trying to kill one or two of them. They'll suicide trying to do it. You can also change the position of where they're shooting. If they start overrunning C, you can shoot right on top of C. I would suggest shooting a little before C, a little ahead of it. Once you see that it's a lost cause, get your gunners inside. You can set up in there. Once I get inside, I like to set up next to the structure here and aim towards the front door. The structure will give you partial protection from trebs, but it won't protect you 100%. Trebs can still sneak in there. I'll continue pummeling this door until I'm out of ammo. Sometimes the enemy climbs the wall in the front over to the left. And you can change position to over here and start pummeling the stairs. There's another way into this structure, which is through the side door or the back door. They'll start coming through there once they fail on these other two points. This is probably the best angle on the side door. There just wasn't that much of a threat there this time. And that's it for Valley Fortress. In Riverlands Castle, I like to put these guys in the back balcony. 
they'll just relentlessly pound that back stairs. You just got to be careful because this area can be trapped. This will go on for a while and the enemy heroes will realize what's going on and they'll try to make their way up those front stairs and around the stairway to my left. Then at that point they'll either try to trap my gunners or they'll try to kill them. But until then you can just continuously pound these guys. Notice how I keep looking over at the front stairs to see if anybody's coming up there. they'll just keep sending their guys up that way. One time we started getting flooded through the front stairs. The enemy team was just steamrolling us at the time. I didn't realize this at the time, but if I put that marker right on top of that railing, it'll pummel right on the point. It's just a good thing to know. It gets right over the top of that railing. They actually saved the day in this game. This is really all I have for this castle. I just saved these guys for the end. I just want to show you guys one thing in Hidden City. This is a good way to take the B point. I know a lot of teams struggle with this, but this really does a good job at clearing the point. Sometimes you might not get a lot of kills, but the enemy do not want to have anything to do with those cannonballs. So they'll abandon that point. Sometimes they'll come around and try to flank you with cavalry. So it would be nice to have some shields on those gunners. But more often than not, it clears the point right away. Notice how I run back and look around the corner. Just making sure there's no cavalry back there. Just remember one thing. Once you put those gunners on the field, the enemy will be coming for you. You put a huge target on your back. So just be careful of that. 